Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Shar Weekly. And in this video, I'm going to show you that how you can interact with your virtual object in augmented reality using Reality Kit. This video is part of my new upcoming course, Mastering Reality Kit in iOS, which will be available probably somewhere around end of May or in June. So I'm creating a brand new project. I've selected iOS, Augmented Reality App. Let's go ahead and type in some name of the project. You can see that the interface I'm using Swift UI and for the content technology I'm using Reality Kit. Let's go ahead and save it on the desktop, but obviously you can save it anywhere you want. Now one of the things that you have to make sure is you are selecting the physical device. So I'm going to go ahead and select my iPad. And since my iPad is running a lower version, I can always go back to settings and change it to 15.3. But if your iPad is up to date, use 15.4, obviously. OK. We're not really using the experience file which is a real, reality composer file. So I'm just going to delete that. If it allows me to delete it. Oops, uh, there we go. And I'm also going to remove the code that was loading the stuff from that file. Okay. So now the first thing what I want to do is add some sort of a virtual object. Now that virtual object can be anything, but uh, I'm just going to go ahead and create a box. Before I add the box to my real world, I need to create some sort of an anchor. So I'm going to go ahead and create an anchor. And since we're using Reality Kit, we can use the entities, meaning anchor entity. If you're using AR kit, then you can use AR anchor, but since we're using Reality Kit, you should always be using entities, which are anchor entity, model entity, and so on. Now, one of the things you will realize is since I have selected an actual device, I can see a couple of different options like plane. If I don't select the device and select a simulator, you will see that now the options are different. So always make sure that you're selecting an actual physical device when you are working with an augmented reality application. I want this anchor to be created whenever it finds a plane. And in our case, it will be a horizontal plane, meaning some sort of a desk, surface, uh, some sort of a floor, ground, anything like that. I'm also going to go ahead and make sure that this particular plane is added to my scene. This can be done by simply saying arview.scene.addAnchor and I can add an anchor. Now currently nothing is hooked up to this particular anchor. So what we want to do is we want to create some sort of a virtual object like a model entity that we can display in our real world. I'm going to go ahead and create a box using model entity passing in a mesh. Mesh basically means that the wireframe of this particular entity. I'm going to say that this will be a box with 0.3 meters in length. And since it's a box, it's a 3D object, the height, the depth, depth and the width will all be the same. For the material, I'm just going to go ahead and use a simple material and passing in the color red. Metallic, true meaning it's going to be a little bit reflective. The other thing that I want to do, since I want to interact with this particular box and probably change its color, I want to make sure that it does generate collision shapes. If you don't do that, then you will not be able to interact with your box. Finally, I will go ahead and add this particular box to the anchor. There we go. Now, if you run the application, you will see that this particular box will be added. So let's go ahead and try to run the app. So let's go ahead and run the app. And you will see that when I run the app, it's going to try to find 
the plane, the horizontal plane, and as soon as it finds the plane, it's going to add the red box. Right? Now, if I tap the box, nothing is really going to happen. It's just a box, a 3D red box. So what we need to do now is to make sure that we are able to tap the box. Okay, so in order to tap the box, what we need to do is we need to implement a tap gesture recognizer on the AR view that we have created on line number 21. Now, whenever we are going to add a tap gesture recognizer, you will see that I have the function which is add gesture recognizer and I can go ahead and pass in a UI tab gesture recognizer with a target and action. But it would be a much better choice if I do this, all of this stuff, basically handling of the gesture inside the coordinator instead of implementing it inside the AR view container struct. So for that, I'm going to go ahead and create a coordinator. You can create a coordinator in a completely separate file. That's perfectly fine. And I recommend that you do that. I'm just going to create it right over here. So everything is nice in one single file for demo purposes and demo purposes only. I'm going to go ahead and create a coordinator, which is going to be using the NS object. In the coordinator, I'm just going to go ahead and create a view, which will be of type AR view. And then I will create a function, which is called handle tap, or you can call it anything you want. The signature of the function will be, it's going to take a recognizer, which will be of type UI tap gesture recognizer. And that's our coordinator. Inside the AR view container, which is of type or which is conforming to UI view representable, we have already implemented a couple of these functions which are part of the UI view representable protocol, including make UI view and update UI view. Another function is make coordinator. And the responsibility of make coordinator function is to return a coordinator. So we're simply going to go ahead and create an instance of coordinator and return it. Now we have the coordinator, we can set up the coordinator inside our make UI view. The first thing we're going to do is using the context, we're going to get access to the coordinator and property view and assign it to the AR view so that the coordinator will know about the AR view. Next, in the UI tab gesture recognizer, we're going to say that the person who will be handling the tab gesture will be the coordinator and the function in the coordinator that will help, that will access that will be called handle tab. Just the signature. There we go. So this means that whenever we are going to tap on our AR view, it's going to forward the request and that will be handled by the coordinator handle tab function. Inside the handle tab function, the first thing we're going to do is to unwrap the view, which is the AR view. Next, we're going to get the tap location. Where exactly have you tapped on the screen? This can be done by calling recognizer.location in the view. The tab location will be provided to you. And if you take a look at it, tap location is simply a CG point. Next, we need to find out if the tap location has intersected with our model entity box. So if let entity equals to view dot entity at a particular position, and we can pass in the CG point, and then we can go ahead and safely try to cast it to model entity. So if all of this succeeds, we will have the entity. And once we have the entity, we can go ahead and change the material. Material means that we can change the thing that is wrapping the particular mesh of the object. So in this case, we can use a simple material. And in the simple material, the color can be green and its metallic can be true. And that is it. 
Let's go ahead and run our application and see that if we can tap on the virtual object, and if we're able to do that, it should be able to change the color. I'm going to go ahead and run the application. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to try to find a nice plane. And you can already see that we are able to find the plane. And we're able to put our red box on the plane. Next, I'm going to go ahead and start tapping only once on the particular virtual object. And now you can see that it has changed the colors. If I tap on the object again, it doesn't really do anything because it's already green. But we can do something in our code that can allow us to randomly select different colors. For this, I'm going to go ahead and add a simple extension on the UI color, which is going to give us a random colors. Once we have the extension, we can change the material color that we're setting by simply saying UI color dot random. This means that it's going to simply assign a random color whenever I'm going to tap on the particular virtual object, which in this case is a box. Let's go ahead and run it again. And this time you'll see that whenever I will tap on the box, I will be able to get a different color. It's all random. So as long as I'm tapping it, it's just assigning different colors. If I tap somewhere else, not on the box, you can see nothing is going on. The reason is that we are only intersecting it when we are actually tapping on the box. And there we go. We have now created our augmented reality application that is able to interact with virtual objects that we place in our real world. If you like this video and want to support my channel, then the best way would be to check out my Udemy videos as well as my brand new book, Surviving the Coding Bootcamp, from no coding experience to earning a six-figure salary. This book just got released yesterday, and this is an amazing book. This book is not only about people who are going to the coding bootcamp, but it's also about everyone who is trying to become a software developer. You can see the different uh, things that I'm covering over here, uh, debugging, pet project certification. How can you become a software developer, whether you are attending a bootcamp or you are just doing self-taught development. So you can see there's a lot of different things so it applies to junior developers, intermediate, everyone from interviewing techniques, working your first few days on the job, and even the success stories. So this book is available for only $9.99. And it covers a lot of cool stuff. It's available also in EPUB as well as physical form. So you can go on Amazon and you can actually buy it from there if you want to. So definitely check this book out. Now, if you're interested in Udemy courses, then I have a lot of different Udemy courses which you already know about. And all the links to the book as well as the courses is right there in the YouTube description. So thank you so much. And I, I really hope that you have enjoyed this video.